Appreciate you sitting through that. My name is Andrew Greenberg. I began doing these screenings. There's a previous video which had even worse acting, believe it or not. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was a step above porn star acting uh, about 15 years ago. I started doing it. I was a board member of Georgia Normal. Did that as part of that. I no longer uh, serve that, but I still stay active with a lot of different groups. So I'm glad to continue doing these. One thing you saw with that uh, film is while being arrested will ruin your day, your week, maybe your, month, uh, maybe your month, being convicted will ruin your life. And this movie won't necessarily stop you from being arrested, but it will go a long way to keep you from being convicted. There's no way to stop a cop who will do the wrong thing from necessarily doing the wrong thing. Again, as everyone said, you're not going to touch him, you're not going to resist it, but you will get a good lawyer afterwards and you'll take care of it. And this is about putting up numerous levels of defense for yourself. There's no one magic, I don't want to say bullet in this uh, context. There's not one magic defense. It's a number of different layers of defense that your lawyers can use. I am not a lawyer. To my right, however. Uh, uh, my name is Christina and I am a lawyer. <laughs> uh, can you? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, hey, um, I'm Christina, and I am a lawyer. <laughs> I'm not your lawyer, but I am a lawyer. So she's not representing you at this moment, <laughs> but uh, we, can, uh, we can talk about a fair amount of this. Um, so there are a few things I'd like to clear up from the movie. Some things have changed in the time since it was made. Um, some things are specific to Georgia. How many of you do live in Georgia? One or two of you. Okay. <laughs> So uh, the ID thing, police will be asking for ID, and the courts here ha are one of the states, and there are a number of states that have done this, that have said that police can ask for your ID whether you're driving or not. If you're driving, you have the doctrine of what's called implied consent, which says you consent to show them your ID, basically. Um, on the other hand, if you're just walking, they can't, if you, and you refuse to identify yourself, they actually can bust you for criminal trespass which is a bizarre thing, but it doesn't say that you necessarily have to show ID. There's no statute that says that. Basically, you need to affirmatively identify yourself if a cop asks you who you are. And there's a separate charge for uh, giving a false name. So right. Don't give never a false lie to the cops. Thank <laughs> you. One big thing that was not mentioned in there that really should have, never lie to the cops. Uh, just ask, oh, I'm blank on her name, the uh, woman, to the, the home uh, decor maven who went to jail for lying to police. Uh, Martha, Martha Stewart, Stewart, thank you. Yeah, Martha, Stewart right. you Martha Stewart will tell you don't ever lie to police. Uh, so uh, a couple other things uh, to clean up. He talked a little bit about maintaining the, uh, the right to stay silent. Here's the bizarre thing. You have to say that. You have to affirmatively present your right to stay silent. You have to say, police, I am going to stay silent. I invoke my right to stay silent. Otherwise, courts have said that can be, your silence, your pure silence can be actually used against you, which is a bizarre ruling. Yeah. Whenever, um, always affirmatively assert your rights. Don't say, I might want to talk to a lawyer. Maybe I need a lawyer. Just be clear and say, I want a lawyer. Um, there's a scene in the TV show Better Call Saul. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but um, Mike Ermitrout is talking to the police officers, and the only thing that he says is lawyer. And he just repeats lawyer. And then he hands them a business card of his lawyer. And that is what, uh, that's what you should do. Just tell them you want to talk to a lawyer. No maybes, no ifs, no ands. Um, I want to talk to a lawyer, and I don't want to say anything else. I'm asserting my Fifth Amendment right. And that goes a long way helping me, if I represent you in court, keeping whatever you've said, whatever they've seized out of uh, evidence, and that makes it a lot harder for them to convict you. And I would like to introduce our new panelist on this one. <laughs> he is the person from the movie you hate the most. Yes, this is the guy who busted the little old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. My apologies for being late, but when someone else is paying for your dinner, you need to be gracious, right? <laughs> My name is John Patrick Barry. I'm a retired Maryland State Trooper. I'm an out professional actor. Um, and uh, they keep. What? Why are you laughing? <laughs> are we free to go? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do I have your ID still or not? You know, it really depends. So, uh, um, I try to stay current, uh, so if there are questions you have, I'm, I'm going to tell you up front, though, there are plenty of things, plenty of situations, a lot of people will, will say, you know, what about this video, what that, about that video? I cannot 
usually speak because number one, I wasn't there, all right? Um, and number two, I will also say that while there are certain standards per state, not all police have 100% the same standards when it comes to uh, training and when it comes to uh, the actual, um, I guess, what to, what, what to call it. <coughs> The requirements, Sorry, the requirements change from department yeah, to department. per department, every state, what the every department. You know, and and just because you label everyone as police doesn't mean that it's going to be the same. Just so you know, um, my my experience is most limited to um, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, and California. So that's all I can really help you with, to be quite honest. But um, I'm glad to and proud to be a uh, part of this because, you know, exercising your civil rights. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. Let's be frank with that. And to uh, not um, understand that, that's actually a disservice to yourself. So I'm glad to see that the room's packed because um, everyone needs to be, I guess, spreading that particular information. But thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. And before we turn it open to general questions, it has always been my belief and actually based on experience that. The more citizens know their rights and assert them effectively, the better it is for everyone, police and citizens as well. It's people who don't know their rights and go crazy and half cocked about it who often end up in the worst situations both for the police and for them. Knowing your rights, knowing how to behave is critical. These are high pressure situations that the police are trained for and we are not. That's why we repeat the various quotes. The basic training is what you need to know. The basic phrases that we're, we're repeating here are the ones that you just want to stick in your memory if it ever happens very calmly you say these and it keeps the crazy weird chaos that can happen in the situation to a minimum Christine anything you want to say before we go to questions mm, no mm. all right so if we have questions does someone have a box out in the audience one more thing really fast I am gonna say that uh, I have worked with some in every profession you're gonna <coughs> deal with assholes <laughs> okay, um, and unfortunately, even and especially, well, even and especially, that's, that's that can be a profession that attracts a certain type of personality. Oh, this is really cool. So you have to just bear in mind that ev you know there's going to be a small percent of people who just do the wrong thing all the time, and that's the horrible thing. But the unfortunate thing is, in order to stop them, they still have to actually do the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, you can't just say, oh, wait, you know, I, you might do the wrong thing, so therefore we, you know, we have to, like, you know, arrest you now. It, you can't do that to a regular citizen, right? So you can't obviously do that to someone else either who even just because they held uh, a position of authority. Hi there. Um, so my question's based around the fact that I'm a veteran. Um, first off, my massive German Shepherd service dog is always with me. He's extremely friendly, but he looks dangerous. I'm always <laughs> terrified when I get pulled that over color? that they're gonna try and shoot him. Um, my second question is, I've got post-traumatic stress disorder and a really severe fight response. Um, my flight instinct's gone. If a cop escalates a situation at all, my PTSD is gonna take over and I'm gonna try and kill him. I'm years away from being from in therapy from not like reacting like that. How do I make a cop understand like if he touches his gun anything like that, I'm going to revert into I need to protect myself. I mean veteran issues are really bad and veterans get fucked over by cops constantly because of this. I have the great fortune of being very close friends with the uh, chief of police of the VA in West Los Angeles. Um, guy named Chuck, really great guy, has his stuff together. He was a veteran, he was a Marine, he was also in the Army. So he understands it, he gets it. He was on the ground, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't some ivory tower person, he was actually, you know, uh, a grunt. Um, when it comes to your dog, I will tell you that it upsets me personally and also professionally because I can't tell you how many times I've been called to a dog call specifically because the other cops were afraid of the dog but they knew that I was a very sensitive person to dogs and uh, 
nine times out of ten, I'd have the dog eat them out of my hands in like you know three minutes, and they can go handle what they need to handle. Um, unfortunately, and I, I say this with some gusto, is that because of the training that they see the canine go through, um, they're very familiar with what a dog can do to a human being. Um, so that fear is already in the back of their mind of what can happen. By no means am I excusing it because there's plenty of ways to, to you know, uh, to de-escalate that situation. Um, I think the best thing to do, if possible, is to sequester the animal whenever there's a situation that, you know, it's like, okay, if, it's if they're here, keep the dog. Uh, if you're in the car, keep the dog in the car. If you're in the house, lock up the dog in, in, in another room. Understand? When it comes to your PTSD, what, uh, he's a service dog. What happens if they try to make me get out of the car? I need him to be with me constantly. Like. All right, then. Uh, I I wish I had a real answer for you for that, because uh, for you, you have to judge that for yourself. I, I'm sorry that this sounds like a cop bad answer, but it really is like one of those things you have to judge out for yourself. It's like, all right, um, can I put the animal, keep the animal in the car, keep my arm through the window on the animal, and you know, and still have a react, have some sort of you know interaction with the police officer. When it comes to you and your your flight response, um, I know the VA has been terrible when it comes to. Uh, getting you benefits, you know. I, uh, one of my closest friends in LA is uh, is Marine Corps. You know, saw some saw some ground activity, to put it lightly, and um, he has lots of trouble getting benefits. So, um, well, they don't give a shit about us. So. And, and and that's certainly something that all of us, every person in this room, should be like knocking on their senator and representatives doors about because there's no excuse there's no fucking excuse for veterans not getting their benefits all right sorry if i sound like bernie sanders on this but if you send a bunch of people to war then god damn it you better be able to pay for the benefits when they get back all right so, so two interesting things that this brings up uh, one, uh, I equate very closely to what gun activists tell me. So we talk about don't talk to the police. One thing that I've heard from gun activists, uh, the whole question of uh, there's a gun in the car, what do I tell the cops, et cetera, et cetera. I've heard two things. One, don't talk to the cops, assert your right to be silent. The other is there's some activists who say you should tell a cop anything they need to know about that situation. I have whatever and I've got the papers for it in the car. So there are two sides on this one. But one thing I think is true is that if you are dealing with a cop and there is information they need to know, you need to impart that to them. I do know that hearing impaired have cards that they will hand out, I am hearing impaired. So if they're pulled over, their hands are on the, on the wheel, but they've got this card ready to hand off immediately. Um, so what do you need to tell a cop at the time? What do you think that cop needs to know? Whatever the situation is, hello officer. Uh, I've, uh, I do not plan to cause any problems. I do need you to know that I have some issues of which you should be aware. The second one is just how badly we have seen some situations with police dealing with mental health issues in general and not yeah. just PTSD. Uh, so you cannot assume that police have any understanding of mental health issues, and I hate to say it, especially if you're in rural Georgia. Maybe you can expect something in Atlanta, but we've got a big state and different levels of training. So it goes back to what do police need to know and what's going to make them scared and more fearful. So uh, we will generally say, don't talk to cops. A lot of the time it will not help you. There's nothing, no way it can help you in a lot of ways it can hurt you. On the other hand, if you feel there is something the police need to know, this is my service animal, my doctor uh, strongly suggests that I be with him at all times for my safety. Um, and if you have paperwork along those lines, I don't know what the paperwork is, that's great. But uh, you, 
it's partially incumbent upon you to de-escalate a situation and sh ensure that there's not a high stress level to bring down the police officer's stress level. So whatever you need to impart, do. One thing that that movie said that I don't always agree with, and I think it's important in this situation, he said pull over immediately. I go with the ACLU guidelines on this yeah. one, which is find a lit populated area and then pull over. And in your case, an area that you'd be more comfortable in. If you yeah. if there's any th sort of environment that would make you more comfortable, pull into that one. Um, so yeah, this really does touch on some other areas that give us the gray part of this whole thing. And for everybody's safety, that is the number one thing. You can deal with the legal ramifications first. Dealing with your health in a, in a crisis situation, that's more important and everything else can be dealt with later. Do what you can to ensure a safe situation for everybody and a low stress situation. Does that help at all? Yeah, I really appreciate it. I um, just want to say when they were giving me my combat training, I took a three hour class on de-escalating situations with people who are wearing suicide bomb vests. The fact that the police How do you de that? are not yeah. as good as escalate, uh, de-escalating as our military really, really scares me because our military fucks up a lot of shit. And, and I will say, again, it's the levels of training. We've had a number of police on these panels who I would love to have in any situation like that. Uh, and we've had Gulf War veteran police on these panels. But on the other hand, they're the ones who will exactly start telling me what idiots some of their coworkers are. Oh. <laughs> do, do you still have your, your uh, military ID? All right. I will say. Oh, I, I totally do that. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, don't. No, 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 no. Yeah. 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 No, no, it's not an accident. Make sure that whenever you hand them your license and registration, your proof of insurance, depending on your state, especially if you've served, make sure you can them military ID. Not just because of your situation. Turn off all recording information right now. <laughs> you might get out of your ticket. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Make sure they need to know that. Um, yeah, just like he said. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's hard. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then uh, whatever you can help them with the documentation, you know, just with that information in and of itself. And thank you for your service. <coughs> oh God. Are you kidding? I know. I know. Dogs? I'm you just so the, scared right now. Look at the right collar. Now. Man, you want to run up and pet this dog just from the collar. It's Captain America dog. Yeah, <laughs> man. A German Captain America. I'm all about it. All right. Sorry. In back. <laughs> I got uh, two things. First, to touch on the military ID. Some states, or I know at least North Carolina, they're putting veteran on your on your license now. Or is this happening? Can you hear me? He's in the back corner. I can, okay. Yeah. I just didn't know where you were. Right here. There you go. Um, so like some states, you get veteran right on your license. And yeah, good. I, I will say that m might help you not get hassled as much. Um, uh, the second thing is, is that video available on the website? So I'm like, show my yeah, friends. Yeah, most yeah. of it's up. Okay, you you already have it. They're actually. Um, I have California, and mine says it too. They're they're actually <laughs> uh, clips. Each of the snippets are on YouTube. You know, each separate snippet. Yeah. And Flex your rights. Not that I look for them. <laughs> Flex your rights is a great organization. We're glad they put up for free. But if you want to buy copies for your idiot friends who need to see it, they would really appreciate the revenue stream. Yeah. They can hire. E Continue hiring great actors to bust <laughs> old ladies. So uh, <laughs> I will encourage you to share this however you can. They sell business cards with the facts on it, right? Like that you can hand out. And the ACLU gives them out. Flex Your Rights has them. I, I, we've had them here in past years. I'm sorry I didn't bring at least an example of them. Um, and uh, did you have another question in the back? I'm sorry. Was that it? Oh, Christina actually did want to talk a little bit about actual good conduct <laughs> for these situations so if you want to touch on that that's what my ACLU cards usually say yeah there were uh, I think they give you a lot of really good advice um, in the film um, about how to uh, just staying calm making sure that you make it out of the incident um, alive because um, if you're alive at the end of it even though you're arrested um, someone like me can't help you um, we can fix just about whatever happens as long as you're one still alive and two um, you've asserted as many of your rights uh, as you possibly can uh, so the 
ACLU has some guidelines for uh, some suggestions for how to handle this, um, which are very much uh, in line with what you saw in the video. And they um, talk about staying calm. Um, I think we've talked about stopping the car in a safe place as quickly as you can. Um, do not resist arrest. That's a separate charge. No matter what's happened, um, don't resist arrest. Um, and make sure that um, if you're going to find yourself, I, I know that there's a lot of protests that are happening across the country for various things these days. Um, and if you participate in those, make sure that you have uh, perhaps written on you in magic marker or talked to people. Um, let people know where you are. Um, know who uh, you need to call if you wind up uh, having uh, to need a lawyer. Um, and remember that you're not, if there, if you think that you're being done wrong by the police officers, the street's not the place to sort that out. Um, let me sort that out. Let me, uh, hear all about your story. Let us go into court and let's fight it there. Don't fight it on the street because you're not going to win that one. Um, and, uh, and then like they said in there, try and keep as good of notes, uh, as you possibly can. Um, the law changes, um, pretty frequently. Um, we get new rulings from the Supreme Court all the time. Um, I think you saw in the video where the police officer just picked up the guy's phone and started flipping through uh, under a case that came out, I think it was two years ago, Riley v. California. They can't do that anymore. They need to have a search warrant. They can take your phone, but they can't get into your phone um, without a search warrant. Also, if you have an iPhone and it has the thumbprint, um, you need to remember that your passcode is something that's protected by the Fifth Amendment. You have to say something you have to incriminate yourself in order to give them that passcode your fingerprint is not something that you have any reasonable expectation of privacy in and if your phone can be opened up by your fingerprint they don't need a warrant to get into your phone anymore uh, just remember that and another thing is clean your screen I can see the grease tracks on <laughs> friend's screen of what their zigzag up downs <laughs> and all overs are so clean your screens so I think that covered most of the things that I wanted to, to say just um, to main calm. This guy's got a question. Yeah. Um, just really fast, when I wanted oh, to, no, I wanted to mention about uh, the the pulling over to a safe spot, and this actually might help you. And mm -hmm. in, in the respect, um, we're at, we're at the point where almost every police department now has at least dash cams. <laughs> Not every single, but almost every. So to help you, to help the police officer, and to even help her. Um, if you roll down your window, stick your arm out, and you go like this, you give them that high sign that you understand that you're there, that they're there, and you're going to pull over. But if you just keep walk going by yourself, that, that signal to them is some sort of eluding, that you're not going to it. But this, that you're telling them that you're going to pull over. You give them a high sign that you're going to pull over, all right? Um, that will be, uh, <laughs> yeah, make sure it's the correct finger. <laughs> this, this, as this guy pointed out, you know, correct finger, because that will, you know, that, that, that'll also help. And if, and if in any case that when they say, if he hears them saying, stop resisting, say out loud, I am not resisting. I am not resisting. Yeah, okay. most of the, uh, whenever the, the dash cams that are on most of the cop cars, at least in Georgia, they kick on when the lights come on. So if they're just sitting there driving around, the cameras aren't on unless they specifically turn it on, but automatically they get turned on whenever their lights and sirens go on and they'll stay on. Um, but the microphone is usually on uh, the police officer, if, even if they don't have body cams, or at least that's what I've seen. So speak loudly, speak clearly, and like they said, don't get an attitude. In the back. Hey guys, um, as a Georgian, I have the understanding through mostly admittedly hearsay that in my car, which is my property, I can have my gun in there un basically unfettered. Now, <laughs> that being said, I know I have my gun in there so that I can use it if I need it. That being said, I keep it in my passenger seat when I'm driving. When I get out of the car, I stick it in the center console. When I start driving, I take it out again. Is there any situation where that kind of behavior is going to get me in trouble? 
Well, I guess there's the difference between Perfect. legal trouble <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and whether a, a police officer is not going to be very happy with you. Um, so regardless of whether you have a permit or not, I can tell you that an officer is going to rightfully be nervous if they see a gun sitting on your passenger uh, seat, no matter what kind of, of permits you have. In Georgia, you are allowed to have a firearm, own a firearm, but you will get in trouble. You will get arrested. It is a felony if you have a concealed firearm. And and so if you do not have a carry concealed permit, um, you can't keep it in your glove box, you can't keep it in your console, um, you can keep it out, but again, that may save you from legal trouble, but that's cold comfort if a police officer gets nervous seeing a gun and takes action. I, I am a card carrier, mm -hmm. but and, and I absolutely understand that the smart thing, obviously, is to, you know, he's here, put it away, but... Yeah. Is there any legal precedent where just having it, just making him nervous, I'm committing some kind of crime? Well, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a tough situation because I, I, you have to kind of think about this pl the police officer that's going to be coming up to your car. They're going to be more nervous seeing the gun out sitting on your, on your passenger seat, or they're going to be more nervous catching a glimpse of it if you have like a holster in your pants or if they see it in the glove box whenever you go and get um, your, your registration from the, from the car, uh, or from your glove box. I would tell them that you have it. I would tell them where it is. Um, and so that they're not surprised. I think that's probably the safest thing for you to do. And especially if you have a permit, then where you have it is not a legal issue. And is, is there is there anywhere, sorry, is there anywhere at all that I could physically have my car where I no longer have that right to have my firearm in my vehicle? Well, if you're on private property, obviously whoever owns that private property has the right to tell you whether or not you are allowed to have that firearm on their property because they can tell you you can't be on their property. So uh, that would be, you know, you could get in trouble for trespassing or be asked to leave. But um, And then I would check to see whether or not there are laws concerning having them in uh, bars or having them in public parks, federal uh, national parks. I think there are some, some laws governing that. Uh, governing that. Uh, just to say real fast with that, um, coming from the yeah. person who's approached vehicles and seen the butt end of, of guns <laughs> sticking out under, of people's car, uh, car seats, um, I will say that it's one of those things that if I think you can reach it immediately, that's a problem <laughs> for me as a police officer. Um, plain view is a very interesting thing. If I can see plain view of like, hey, there is a little crack pipe sitting on the f you know passenger floor of your vehicle, that's plain view, right? What if your what weapon was there instead of at the seat next to you when the, when the approach happens? It's a little different than being going like this than to have to go like that. Now on top of that, both hands out the window, all your IDs, including that permit you were talking about. Absolutely. All right. You know, including it especially. As a matter of fact, I'll be frank with you, put that on top of the license. So that's the first thing that the officer sees. So that the way, oh, this is okay. And then they'll probably ask you to step out of the yeah. vehicle away from the weapon for their safety. And let's be frank, and for yours at that point. Okay? You don't want a police officer to say he felt threatened by what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's been up here a couple. Please get to him eventually. For, for Georgia, just following up, I, I have a concealed carry permit. I had a job where I had to carry a gun. And before I got this concealed carry permit, I asked, like a hundred police officers and had some encounters speeding and so forth. So they almost to a T they said, if you don't have a permit, which is legal in Georgia, it's your house, put it on the dashboard, put it in plain sight. I know, but this is what, this is what they say, put it in plain sight and, and obviously tell the police officer that they're coming. If you have a concealed carry permit, which I recommend, if you're going to carry a gun in your car in Georgia, all you have to do is go to the sheriff's office and get fingerprinted, and they will give you a concealed carry permit. You have no, you have to supply no reason in Georgia to get that. So if you're going to have a gun, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall I shoot? Yeah, there's some reason. 
not in California. We have to show a reason why you. Have well, to pay. okay, so yeah, ha there's a yeah. there's a payment, yeah, but there's no reason yeah. in like most states you have to have a reason. In Georgia, you don't. All right, let's head on. And then, to, we, and then we don't have much time. Let's get the yeah. one last question, I'll, and while we're passing the box, one thing to say. The way to short circuit it, put it in your trunk. And any of you carrying a play bag, that goes in your trunk too. Never have a rape kit sitting out in your car. Put anything you're concerned about in your trunk. All right, so my question is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's somewhat uh, what you already touched on in regards to when you get pulled over by an officer and you should pull over in a nicely lit area. So what happens when you... Like in my situation, I put on the hazard lights and just to let the officer know that I acknowledge that he's back there and I stuck my hand out letting him know, okay, yeah, I'm going to pull over. And I pull on it over right underneath a street light and then he gets on his intercom and tells me, no, I want you to go up the street and I want you to pull over into this dark, uh, lit, uh, this dark area in a church. Like it was a church parking lot. It's dark and there were two more cop cars up there waiting for me. So what do I do in that situation when I know there are two other officers waiting and I'm about to be, you know, not trampled on, but there are three men waiting to do something or at least be on edge about whatever it is that I may, you know, end up doing in that possible situation. So what, what do I do? Do I stay there or do I pull up and comply with, you know, what he's telling me? As a police officer, what would you prefer that he do? <laughs> <laughs> Stop the panel! <laughs> <laughs> so legally, you want to, well, legally... You can already start saying, am I being detained or am I free to go at any point you want to? Yeah, when those now, lights come on, though, you're technically under arrest. Right. So you want this guy to live through yeah. it. Of course, That's, of course. Yeah. I want this guy to live through it, you know. Okay, so it's, That's where my hesitation it's is. It's 3 a.m. to mm -hmm. paint the picture. So 3 a.m., I'm driving, I'm the only car on the road. Well, it, it, we have this terrible, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> we, we we have to ter we have this terrible, terrible like uh, philosophy is that you know at that at that hour, you know the, the people who are out there are usually drunk, us or the bad guys, <laughs> um, and uh, you know now I'm, now I'm not I got I'm, I'm just saying that that was the culture. I'm not saying it's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, in that's a tough situation. First of all. Technically, that he's giving you a legal order, you know, um, and they can articulate at that point that a church parking lot is a safer place, especially with traffic um, going by. Because the reason I'm retired is that about the time that you were talking about a car, uh, a drunk driver hit my pol hit my police car while I was r just sitting there writing a ticket, and uh, they hit me at 85 miles an hour. Okay. And so it's like you think at that hour that you wouldn't have a problem except for the drunks. <laughs> and sure enough, it was the drunk that ended my career. Um, so it, and it comes to articulating safety for that officer, yeah, he, he or she can say, yeah, I pull over in this parking lot because the chances of a speeding vehicle coming through a church parking lot are a lot slimmer than them being on, you know, whatever the major thoroughfare is it, what, what is it around here? Peach tree, <laughs> peach tree. <laughs> uh, throw away it is, you know. So they're all peach tree. Yeah. As a general rule, we will advise to follow the policeman's orders. Don't resist, but make clear uh, your concerns. P please make sure you also turn your interior light on. Um, that also helps lower uh, some nerves because that way it's it's a little less. Um, it it seems a little less furtive. In that respect, <coughs> keep all your lights on. Keep your interior lights. I'm going to tell you a little secret about police. They like light. You know, there's a reason why we have takedown lights. We've got spotlights. We've got high beams. Whenever you know a stop is made, all those lights go on so they can see everything. You know, so. And you're gener you're in a situation where you are seeing marked cars. One of the things about Georgia is you shouldn't expect to be pulled over by an unmarked car. That's yeah. generally not supposed to happen. So if it, oh, we run, we over time. All right, we're over time. We'll hang out outside. Nine forty. We can go for another couple hours. All right, we'll be out front. Except I have to pee, so uh, no! I'll be.